Okay, good evening every, everyone. Um, I first would like you to introduce yourself and then we will begin the discussion. So the topic for tonight's discussion is on and what we expect from meditation practice. So maybe start from you, introduce yourself and then around. So, um, my name is Nira and I'm um, really from London but I came here for university and I've been in Bristol for quite a while and um, I'm quite a regular here. So. Cool. Uh, I'm Daniel, uh, I live in Bristol, uh, sort of working and stuff and uh, I'm just trying to sort of keep <coughs> going with, uh, with the Buddhism. I, I went to uh, Thailand and ordained as a monk and was a monk for, for a little while over there and I've um, come back and I'm just trying to sort of keep in mm, touch. How long have you been a monk? Uh, just one month. So, Where uh, are about? Um, it was uh, Fang in northern Thailand, um, just up in uh, Fang. In Fang, yeah, Fang Valley. In Fang, yeah. Fang district. Uh, Fang district, yeah, three uh, about two and a half hours. In Chan Chan Plain. Yeah, there was, I was up at Wat Tham Panoi, uh, which mm. is the forest temple on the hill, mm. and then there was uh, I was in a, a sort of one of the sort of temples in the in the village as well. Mm. So. Mm. Okay, good. How about you? I'm George. I'm from the Midlands, and this is my first time seeing this. You're from the Midland, but now you're living in Bristol. Yes, yeah, no, I'm in Bristol. We have the temple in Midlands, not far from, you know, Litchfield. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tomorrow I'm going to the temple in Litchfield. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. Uh, my name's Lee. Um, I've got a business, and I'm quite sort of uh, scatterbrained, brain, so I'm just looking to uh, find some ways of calming my mind down, really, mm. and sort of focusing on the more important things, really. Mm, okay. Hi, I'm Richard. Um, I. I live in Bristol. In fact, I live in Portishead. It's not really Bristol. Um, I've uh, done some meditation. Um, I'm interested in uh, Theravada um, Buddhism. Have uh, read a lot about it. Have um, kept on meaning to come back and, and, and do some more. I eventually got up the courage to come here. Out a bit. Uh, I'd probably come and be the you know first timer. And then there's some others too. So that's a good thing. You know. Mm. So okay. three of you c come here together, your friends? No, no, no. We no. just met so here? Just met. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's just very good fortune. Okay, good. Hello, my name is Chuti Ma. I um, come from Thailand. And I come to study PhD here um, in drama, but my subject is the Buddhist philosophy in Samuel Beckett drama. So I'm interested in Buddhism, and before I came here, I have... Um, involved to the meditation workshop and I found it fascinating and um, it can relieve the feel of my suffering or something like that at the moment. So I, I want to practice more here. Mm -hmm. okay. Hello, I'm Tito Wan. I'm also from Thailand. Uh, I study master's degree in international relations in Bursa University. Uh, Full-time student and um, I'm attending the meditation class because I really like uh, to keep in touch with the with this life and meditation and feels like uh, I really love the philosophy and it leads my way to a more peaceful mind. Hello everyone, my name is Mai. Yes, I'm studying international security in master degree in the University of Bristol. Uh, um, ever practiced the uh, meditations, the uh, preliminary one in in Bangkok, and every interest because it it teach me how to make myself have a consciousness with myself. That's why I want to practice continually. Hi, uh, my name is Bui. Uh, um, actually, I study a PhD in Thailand. I came here as like a visiting research student. Uh, I really like to practice meditation. Uh, I have made meditation since uh, seven years ago and try to continue to practice meditation all the time. Okay, thank you for your introduction, for your self introduction. And I think you might have known me from the website. Yes. Can you recall my name? No, I can't. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, in fact, I'm a Thai Buddhist monk. So as a Thai Buddhist monk, we usually have three names. We use the first name, or the given name, and then your surname or family name. 
But when you receive our ordination as a Buddhist monk, you are also given a Dharma name or Pali name. So the name will be given in Pali by your preceptor. So my Dharma name or Pali name is Piyo Bhaso. So from if you read our website, you will see only my first name and my Dharma name. My family name will be used only for for official purpose, like on my passport. It's no Dhamma name, only my third, my first name and my surname, that's it. And we have a special title, the, the word Pra. I think when you were a monk, the people call you Pra. Pra Farang. Yes, yeah. Pra Farang. <laughs> pra Farang, Pra Farang, yes. Pra, pra simply means a monk. Yes, ordinary monks, Pra. But my title is Pramaha. Yes, Pramaha simply means an educated monk because I have passed the Pali studies and then I was given this title yes, by, it. in fact, it was originally given by the king and later on, and this task was bestowed to the Sankaraja or the Supreme Patriarchs. I came to Bristol to do my PhD and in Buddhist studies I'm now writing my thesis. Okay. It is not easy. <laughs> we just finished yours. Finish Where? Bath. Bath. Yes. So you must know Venerable Mahin. No, no I, my, my mom was all in, in management, not a, oh, okay. writing, writing up a thesis. I, oh, okay, I yeah, yeah, got it, I got it. Right. So what field do you graduate? Do you graduate again? So I did a PhD in um, it was in management. It was in, in management. management. Yes. Yes, in management. In management. Yes. I know that there is one Shilangan monk who is teaching at Bath University. Really? Yes. No, I've not come across Maybe there are two universities in Bath, right? There, there's Bath Spa. And okay, and I, I got it because he's working for Bath Spa University. Oh, that's the other one. Okay, the other one, All right? Okay, the newcomer, do you mind introducing yourself? Yes, my name is Monica. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Monica? Yes. English <laughs> 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 name. English yes. name in Thailand is Mon. Yes, yes. Very, very famous name. <laughs> <laughs> and my name is Mook. I'm doing master degree in finance investment. Mm. My name is Joe. Nice to meet you. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Well, to begin our discussion, yes, I would like you, all of you, to think why you come here and what meditation br brings you here. Or what would you like to explore about meditation? And we will start from this side, yes, to tell the reason why you become interested in meditation practice and what you expect from meditation or why you practice meditation. Yes, we have some maybe 40 minutes for a discussion and after that I will give basic instruction on how to do walking and sitting meditation. Okay, do you mind telling us? Um, uh, for me, uh, I would like to achieve internal trans quality of uh, my awareness, uh, try to find peace of mind in my true nature. Yeah. Okay. Um, for me, uh, I'm a Buddhist since I was born, but I didn't practice uh, any meditation that much. But uh, maybe at last, last two or three years ago, I suffer from something that I, I, want just to want to keep myself breathing. So I just wanna focus on just breathing and breathe out. And lucky me, when I focus on this part, I read a lot of, uh, not a lot, just the articles of Buddhist. That's bring me to to how how to make myself have a consciousness and have to focus with myself in inside more than outside things like that. Yeah. Well actually meditation is something very hard but I try to practice to have consciousness and peace of mind and it's still very hard for me and yeah it, I try to like focus on this path 
when I have the time and um, uh, deviate myself away from the material world. All right. Actually, I have to admit that um, when I was a young student, I hate meditation because <laughs> the school um, teacher in the school always um, let us do the meditation, and I found that very um, uncomfortable, and I always thinking about something else. And after I explore more about um, theory in Buddhism, I found that it's fascinating to to rather than just reading, I, we should practicing as well. And once when I get into the meditation workshop, I found that this is the only way to understand what Buddha said. So being mindfulness is the only way to, to understand him, his teaching. Yeah. Um, and the same as you. And in my young, I all, when, when I have a meditation, I always sleepy because I think um, I sleep or not. And when I, I, I discover that it's not something like sleep, I think it's very good for me because uh, when you have some worry or confused, it keeps your mind pace. That's why I always, I want to come here every week. Yeah, for me, I used to do the meditation like every single year with my mom like going to the camp and then doing a meditation for a week. But for when I come to abroad, I, I heard that that would be like, a meditation thing so I just asking the person that have been here before and then I just want to like want to make myself like become more peaceful than because like here I I quite like a bit like lonely so I just like if I come here I would be like more lonely and also like the study thing like it is very hard to understand because all the subject is in English and, and I cannot really concentrate it on the class. So I think that meditation would help me to understand the class more and then just make me feel like peace more peace, more peaceful. All right, thank you. Uh, as the same reason of uh, as my friends, uh, meditation is thing that. Uh, difficult to do and I think that um, if you can do it it's be useful to me. Obviously meditation wasn't something that w would be part of my life normally and in fact probably the people around me you know a lot of people would think meditation was a quite a strange thing to do and be mm. an idolatry. Mm. Um, the reason that I wanted to originally meditate was because I came to realize that the thoughts in my head were often wrong. They you know you might think, ah, oh, I'll, I'll get this next thing. Mm. Um, and my head would tell me, you know, work and do this next thing, and it would bring you happiness, but it never quite did. And so I started to kind of question that and realised through learning to do some, some meditation at a very basic level, realised that a lot of the thoughts that went through my head was like the radio. It was, it was telling me things that I really wasn't consciously producing these mm. thoughts, but they were just coming across and telling me nonsense. So I, f I thought there was a deeper level of, tranquility within me that if I if I denied it, if I didn't come along and do it, I was denying something very fundamental about myself, but I don't know quite what that was. Mm -hmm. But it just felt like I, I really ought to do this. A bit like um, if you don't exercise, mm -hmm. you, you start to get flabby and a bit unfit and bits of you hurt. But as you get older, I can assure you, <laughs> it's start to hurt. Yeah. And, um, and so you begin to realise that actually you need to do some stretches and exercise and it feels like the same thing. So may I ask you, what form of meditation have you practiced before? Um, no, I don't, I don't, I, is it this? Um, Which the, form, yes. Watching the breath. Yes. yes, just watching the breath. Just watching the breath. Mm, yeah. Okay, uh, we call it anabhanasti. I'm, I'm not sure. Yes, it, it is a Pali word, anabhanasti, it means the mindfulness of breathing. Yes. Yes, all right. Yes. How about you? Um, well, really, I'm, I'm a new dad, so I'm sort of looking to um, I've, I've got a very busy life with my business and one thing and another and I just, I'm just i just looking to find some balance in my life. I mm. feel like I've been looking for this for a long time. Yes. Um, I just need to find some calm and some clarity in my life really. Mm. really yes, I'm not sure if you told us that you have done meditation before. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I've done some basic home meditation, mm. not really sort of been taught or been anywhere before. Mm. So you, uh, you did on your own? Yeah, yeah. Mm.
and how? Um, just basic sitting, um, just sort of sitting still and tutorial, focus yeah. on the breath. Yeah, focusing on the breath, um, trying to do some sort of half a yoga stretches and trying to sort of relax myself that way. Mm. Uh, some basic level stuff, really. Yes. All right. Yeah, I haven't done meditation before either. You haven't? <laughs> I'm just looking for some sort of peace of mind and calmness. Mm. Help my head out. Mm. Okay, thank you. Um, I was going to sound a bit sort of out there, but I want to reach Nirvana really, or uh, mm. at least get on stream a stream entry, you know. And uh, mm. yeah, that's kind of the major aim. But um, hopefully, mm. in the process, it made me sort of pretty happy and mm. you know, uh, very mindful and uh, a lot more considerate to others as well. So mm. hoping that all that comes about. And the end goal is obviously that's uh, pretty far out, but I think that's uh, mm. got a lucky opportunity to do that in this life. So yes. it's worth a go. So I have a question for you because. Um, you once became a monk, yeah. so my question is, and why did you decide to become a monk? What What do you want to explore? Um, first is obviously to explore meditation, and mm. um, to so really this means you have done meditation for a while, or or you have done some kind of meditation practice before. Yeah, yeah, I, I went through like sort of Tai Chi, and uh, mm. I did sort of like yoga and loads of different sort of types of meditation, like, um, and then I just thought, you know. If, I really wanted to learn the ins and outs of uh, Buddhism, and obviously I knew a lot about Mahayana Buddhism mm. and Theravada, and I just wanted to go away and find out which one was the right one to follow. Yes. And uh, you know, going out there and uh, I suppose spending all that time with the monks, you know, some of the most happiest people I ever met, you know, mm. um, seeing how they could live life and stuff, and mm. it gave me an opportunity to realise that you know uh, that these things do work, and you know, all the questions I had to answer. So I asked them and stuff, and uh, mm. yeah, that's good. So. You think life as a Buddhist monk is difficult? Um, I think it's a very good life. Mm. Um, okay. it's, it's like you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's very it's, you, like especially in Thailand, you live in the most beautiful mm. surroundings, and uh, mm. you know the people are so lovely and very very generous. Yes. Um, when you're on Pindabat, you know they always give you nice food. <laughs> okay. Always nice food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and when they uh, first came to Bristol, it was not so thin, but till it, Smaller than, than now, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then the people from the Paris long invited me to eat lunch every day, but I don't go out there every day. Yeah. yeah so first when I told my friend, where did you go for your lunch? Wow, somebody invited me to eat at the restaurant every day. You are very lucky. You, you, you must be very rich. <laughs> because I thought that I, I had to pay. Yeah. But in fact, I didn't. That's yes. That's a good, that's a good life as well, because like, yeah. You know, you're uh, you know, you're higher than the king. The king has to why to you and mm. you know, and if people see as a respectful person, you've got time to study as well and yeah, it's, good. Yeah, it's uh it's good and mm. as long as you can give some back but it's really So what's the name of the temple? Uh well I, I stayed uh, the the one that I stayed at the last part was um a forest temple called Wat Tampanoi. Wat Tampanoi. You know Wat Tampanoi? Uh it's a cave temple no. that's been going for about twelve years. And the other temple was uh, I forget the name because uh it's actually uh, do you know Fang Valley at all? Uh, I I I have heard Fang district. You mean Fang in Chiang Mai? Uh, it's about three hours up from Chiang Mai, two yes, and a half hours, yes. and then uh, you go through Fang itself, and it's one of the mm. one of the temples there. Mm. So yes, I know one meditation master called Ajahn Blian is living in Fang, but they but, but they can't remember which temple he belonged to. Has he been a monk for thirty years? Yes. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, and he, he he's got a really loud laugh laugh as well. He laughs quite loud. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's was in what Tampanoi. He's uh, oh, okay. he's like called the laughing monk. He's so funny. So okay. If it's the same person, yeah, we uh, mm. yeah, he, he taught me loads of meditation and uh, mm. we sat around the campfire and had chats and stuff. So, mm. but and the color of his robe is different different from mine. It's a it's a darker. Yeah, yes, darker. Dark, yeah, because yes. the forest monk sort of thing. Yes, so, yes, yeah. yes. I know. I know. Yes. Okay. <laughs> same person. <then. laughs> All right, new one. Um, I well, if I could aspire to reach nirvana then. Great, but I don't think that's my goal at the moment. But it, um, I've been coming here regularly, and since I've come here, I've found myself, I guess, becoming more compassionate and um, kind of, I guess, more mellow. I think this does really help with having inner peace and um, having more clarity of mind. And I think when when you have that, you react to better situations. So I. Th- would say meditation has helped a lot. Mm, all right, thank you. Well, according to my experience, I have been teaching meditation for maybe for nearly ten years, 
even before I moved to Bristol, I <coughs> was living in at Wat Mahathat in Bangkok, and we have the meditation section. So every evening, we have the class and talk for the ill-speaking meditators. And I went there. If there is any foreign meditator, just to give to talk to interview. The meditation experience and also to give more details about meditation practice. So my conclusion is: the people who come to practice meditation want to at least explore the Buddhist teachings. They want to achieve the peacefulness of the mind. They want uh, tranquility. They want to find a way to deal with their day-to-day -day problem. And with the hope that after the practice meditation for a while, then they can use, they can apply meditation technique to deal with their life, or perhaps, and this meditation will help them improve the quality of their life. Yes, to develop inner peace, to develop tranquility, and also to understand more about themselves. Yes, to find a way that leads them. Lead them to the right path, and this is what 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 I conclude from my experience. So, however, it, when we talk about meditation, and in fact, there are two forms of meditation or two kinds of meditation. We call it samatha, yes, yeah, samatha meditation. So, what is samatha? Samatha. The word samatha simply means calmness or tranquility or one pointedness. Okay, could you please move this way a bit? So this <coughs> samatha meditation aims to develop concentration, tranquility, one pointedness. The technique is different from vipassana, in that through med through calm meditation, you just try to. Concentrate the mind on one particular object. Either you're breathing or breathing out. You can even use the frame of fire. You can even make some frame. Yes, the frame of color, and focus the eyes on that. Not all the time. You just focus the eyes on that, and then close your eyes and repeat in your mind like a red or white, green. We call it kasina. Is kasina in Pali, which simply means the frame. And in fact, there are at least forty objects, or forty ways, to practice calm meditation or samatha meditation. But when we come to practice, even though you said that you practice vipassana meditation or insight meditation, and in fact, both calm and insight meditation go together. In the way that first, you have to concentrate. You have to develop concentration in order to have it as the foundation, and then you can further practice. You can use it as the foundation. We need calmness. We need concentration, but the level of concentration is different because for calm meditation, we need to to. We need to develop this concentra concentration until we we achieve the deeper, deep and deeper concentration, and this is called excess concentration, or sometimes it is called absorption or jhana. So through jhana or absorption, it can help to suppress. You can even forget just everything. It's like you're not there. Yeah, you are not there when you are very in deep concentration. You don't feel anything. You don't. You won't even hear the gunshot. Yes, if you're in very very deep concentration. Yes, and this calm meditation. And if you don't want to go further, it can help to suppress oral defilement, like uh, you put the stone upon the grass. As you put a stone over here, as long as the stone is there, so the grass cannot grow up. But when this stone is taken away, then the grass grow up. So 
you won't be surprised why some people who have been practicing meditation for several years, but why sometimes they get angry easily. They sometimes become violent, and that's because during meditation, they use concentration to suppress their anger or their short temper. But when they they are in daily life, they do not practice that. And so this is one of the disadvantages of calm meditation. If you solely practice calm meditation, it helps you to calm yourself, but it does not give right to mindfulness living. And this is the reason why we need the second kind of meditation, or as we call it, inside meditation or vipassana meditation. Would you like to introduce yourself? I'm fine. I'm okay. David. Okay. Yes. Okay. And David is. Um, could you tell about <laughs> about the group so perhaps they they know you who you are? Uh, well, um, I was part of the group with you, didn't I? Um, yes. What was that? Three years ago. Yeah, three years ago. Um, so, uh, um, so yeah. Mm, yes. Yes. Previously, David was a regular meditator, but until recently, because he is quite busy. Yes. And the group. Was in fact started by the abbot of the Buddha Vihara Temple, and before I came to live in Bristol, yes. Um, after I moved to study in Bristol, and then I just continued this group until today. All right, the second kind of meditation, vipassana meditation. The term vipassana is a combination of two words. We and pasana, yes. We is like a prefix. It simply means clearly, specially, or through or into, and whereas pasana means to say, to realize, to understand. So the words we pasana mean to see clearly, to see specially, to see through, or to see into, or even to see the variety, or to see specially. Having seen things specially. That means to realize things the way they are. Then we come to understand the life. The people suffer because they can't accept the truth. Is yes, they want, they want to create their own truth. The truth must compromise with my fish. It is not possible. Yes. Um, I know that many people now suffer from economic crisis. Yes, I asked the restaurant owner. Oh, there are not many customers. Yes, normally on Friday night or on Saturday night, most restaurants are always busy, but not during this time. Yes, I think this economic crisis affects all all kinds of business. I don't know. I'm not a business person. <laughs> I know very little about business. I mean, I never run business. Yes. Yes, I have my own business. Yes, the Buddhist business. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, to do vipassana meditation, we may begin with walking meditation, or you can simply sit and be mindful of your feeling or your sensation. Yes, for example, when you sit down, you may begin by observing your own sensation. Yes, start from your head, through your whole body. Yes, this is called vedana vipassana, or the mindfulness of feeling. But uh, according to the tradition I have practiced, so we usually begin with walking meditation, and we try to balance between effort and concentration. When you do walking meditation, you you improve. Or you develop effort, but when you do sitting meditation, you develop concentration. Yes, at least when you do walking meditation, you have, you you develop three quarters of effort, but you have developed three quarters of concentration when you are sitting. So we try to do both walking and sitting meditation equally. Yes, we for example we do walking for about twenty minutes, and after that we do sitting for for about twenty minutes as well. 
So in this way, we can make balance between effort and effort and mindfulness. And when you practice go smoothly, then this will give rise to your progress. That you will see the progress by yourself. And how can you develop your progress? You can observe yourself. If if there is some change, for example, for those who are students, you have better concentration. You have better memories. Yes. Yes, I can say that meditation helps me a lot. Yes, in my studies. Yes, I never learned the words by heart, the English vocabulary is by heart. I just read and then memorize it. Yes, but I read again and again or write it down. It's very very useful. I didn't realize this until I was a bit older, and because as a novice monk, first. We were forced to meditate. You, you were not allowed to ask for a reason. So, as a novice, this is our tradition. You have no right to ask the teacher why I have to do this. The teacher will say, "Just do it. Just do it." It's quite a bit forceful at that time. Even though you 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 didn't like it, but you couldn't run away. Yes, one novice monk said. Uh, well, he tried to. He tried to bargain with his teacher. Yes, and he told the teacher that well, and if you can, if you can give me some soft job, I would be happy to do that. Okay, what kind of soft job do you like? Yeah, any kind of soft job. And then the teacher gave him stuffing. You know stuffing. It's some material that we put in the pillow. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, take this stuffing. And keep blowing. Don't let it down to the to the ground. That's t- that is soft job for him. After he did that for a while, he couldn't go further. Yes, and he became very exhausted. <laughs> you can try, then you will know yourself. Yes, then he came back to the teacher. Well, I thought meditation would be easier for me. Well, meditation is not difficult at all. It's not difficult. It may be more difficult not to meditate. And when you come to learn what meditation is about, then you will find that meditation is not difficult. The people misunderstand meditation. They thought that to to meditate, that you have to sit still, close your eyes, focus your mind, focus your your mind on the particular object. But that is not always true because, and even understand. The word meditation in Buddhist sense, not in English sense, is in fact the word meditation is not actually right for the term bhavana in Buddhism. The term bhavana we use for samatha, samatha bhavana, vipassana bhavana, simply means development or mental development. When you try to develop your mental quality, there are two ways: calm meditation and Inside meditation, yes, of course, for calm meditation, you have to try to concentrate the mind on one particular object. Yes, choose one object, and then if you practice vipassana meditation, and it is based on four foundations of mindfulness: body, feeling, mind, and mind object. It will be like a, you, you read the book, and this book has four four pages. You can't read read all the four, four four pages at the same time. You have to read one by one. You know, in each page, there might be many subtitles. Yes, you can read all subtitles at the same time. Yes, when you read, you read word by word. And this will be like when we practice vipassana meditation. We begin with walking meditation. So walking meditation is the way to be mindful of the air element. So the air element is a part of the body. When we observe the movement of right or left foot, we can walk. We can move our limbs, our hand, because of the air element. Breathing is a part of the body. So for those who are familiar with the mindfulness of breathing, yes, and if you would like to go with that, so you go with that. 
you stay with the breathing of mindfulness, and if you find it useful for you, or you think that the mindfulness of breathing is good for you, I th- I thought that Jan Bin uh, teaches mindfulness of breathing. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, I didn't do a lot of teaching with him, but most of the stuff I did yes. there was um, sort yes. of the breathing yes. yeah. It can be vipassana. It can be either vipassana or samatha, depending on the way you you practice with the mindfulness of breathing. And if you simply focus the mind on the breathing, and that is called calm meditation or samatha meditation. And if you, for example, observe now you have a long breathing and now you have a short breathing. When sometimes you are distracted, you observe that distraction. Do not only focus the mind on one particular object. So that can be called vipassana. Yeah, so anapanasati or the mindfulness of breathing can be either calm or insight meditation. All right. <clears throat> so then I would like to. You have anything to any comments to, to add or whatever? What would you like to? You have anything more to share? What do you expect from meditation practice? Oh, David, you didn't say yet. So the topic for discussion yeah. is what we expect from meditation practice. Well, not to expect anything. You, you didn't expect anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody had expectations. <laughs> It's not the point though, remember, meditation is yeah. not to expect anything. Yes. You expect... No, but it would be to actually be come to a state where you don't expect anything. Yes. Well, at a certain point, you won't expect anything. <laughs> uh, about two weeks ago, yeah, I was travelling in India. <clears throat> I was told that in India, you can't expect... Yes, anything can happen. Yes, something happened to me without my expectation. That my iPhone was was stolen. I'm not sure if it was stolen or it just dropped from my pocket because it was very crowded on the bank of Ganges River. You know, as as a Buddhist monk, I don't know why the people like to approach me. Yes, especially beggars. Yeah, there's particular beggars. There are many beggars in India that like to follow me and beg for money. Yes. I assume that it was possible that my fellow monks who have been to India like to give money to these beggars. So whenever they see the monks, they thought, oh, the generous people come. Yes, we have to approach them beg for money. Yes. So this is what, what I... Sure. Um, that's what happened to me, without my expectation. <laughs> All right. Okay. Then I will give some basic instruction about <coughs> walking and sitting meditation. To do walking meditation, <coughs> we normally stand still and be mindful of our sensation by saying standing three times. To say standing, in fact, we do not imagine that we are standing. So we simply observe the standing position. Yes, standing. You are at that present moment. Yes, standing. So we say standing gently. Yes, if you practice on your own, you don't need to say the word. You don't need to label standing. You simply Try to be aware of your sensation, standing three times, and be mindful of the floor. The floor where you're standing is soft, hard, warm, or cold. Acknowledge it as it is. And after that, we note the mind with intention to walk by saying, intending to walk three times. Intending to walk. That means you know the mind. You have the intention to walk. So this is the way how to observe how the mind is working. Yes, before you do something, and if you observe your mind, you will know, you think first. But it is very quick. In our daily life, it is very quick. Yes, sometimes we, we, we think that we do things in our life automatically. But after you practice med- meditation, or vipassana meditation, before you do something, you can observe. Yes, 
you, you try to observe. So after intending to walk, and when we start walking, we normally move the right foot first. To move the right or left foot, you have to move it with mindfulness. So be mindful from the moment that you move your right or left foot. There are six steps in walking exercise, yes. For the first step, you are mindful of the movement of right or left foot. Right moving, yes. Left moving, like this, keep moving. But mindfully and slowly. And we try to slow down the movement in order to improve mindfulness. Walk slowly, be mindful of the movement. So this helps improve concentration as well. Yes, when you observe the movement, concentration is there. Yes, the mindfulness is there. <coughs> um, remember <coughs> that the movement and the mental laboring must be synchronous, not before or not afterwards. This means you move slowly, mindfully, and at the present moment. Yes. Right moving, left moving. Before you say left, so keep your left foot still, still. Yes, keep your foot still. And then when you say left moving, yes, you keep moving. When we reach the end of walking pace, then put your foot together. Be mindful of standing position again. And then note the mind with the intention to turn. When we turn, we turn clockwise. I will show you, yes. After that, we come to do walking. Yes, we do normally do walking for about 20 minutes. And then when we come to do sitting, to sit, and as I mentioned before, that the meditators, we observe the rising and falling movements of the abdomen. <clears throat> and if you have done the mindfulness of breathing before, Yes, so please feel comfortable to stay with the mindfulness of breathing. You observe the breathing in and breathing out. <clears throat> For the newcomer, I would recommend you to try to observe rising and falling. When you breathe in, abdomen is rising. When you breathe out, abdomen is falling. But remember, do not force yourself. Just breathe in and breathe out normally. Yes, breathe in and breathe out normally. Sometimes you can't con concentrate the mind on rising and falling. Just forget it, because as a meditator, as speculated newcomers, you will be always distracted by thought. So we observe distraction, 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 distraction three times. Why three times? When we say three times, that means we just observe it, observe that distraction, in order to understand the nature of the distraction. Even though the distraction is not gone, you bring the mind back to rising and falling. Just let go, observe it and let go. When you let go, it's gone automatically. And if you just concentrate on it, it won't go away. So observe it three times and then let it go. Bring your mind back to rising and falling or the breathing of breathing out. Is it clear? clear. Okay. Any question? George, your name George? Mm -hmm. Is it clear for you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Yes. Well, if you, and if you don't feel comfortable sitting cross-legged, it is okay for you to sit on, on the chair, on the bench, and we have the stool here, mm -hmm. yes. Um, there are different positions for sitting meditation, yes, you can sit in half lotus like this, mm -hmm. or even like this, this is called Burmese style, mm -hmm. yes. And so what position do you usually sit then? I, I have a small stool, I put my legs under it, so it's yes. like a You want to use one? No, that's okay. Okay, okay. okay. Oh, you can even sit like this, yes, if, you, if that makes you feel comfortable, mm -hmm. yes. But I normally sit like this, yes, sit like this. Um, the seated position should be stable, yes, but you choose not make your, make your body stiff, yes, not like this, and that will make you feel comfortable, so relax. And the position of your hand should be like this. The tops of your, the thumb of your, the tip of your thumb choose joy, and then 
sit in this position. Yeah, relax. Do not create any tension. And if you feel that your body is a bit bending, and then you straight up. Yes. But with mindfulness. Yes. And with the eye closed. And if you feel that you are very sleepy, it is okay to open your eyes. Yeah, it is okay. And we can do meditation with the eyes open. Yes, if you are very sleepy. And you can concentrate on sleepiness. Yes, sleepy, sleepy, sleepy. Yes. Or you can get up, go to the back room to watch yourself. Perhaps that will make you feel better. Hmm. All right. Okay, please stand up. I, I'm not sure if... I think we may... We, we, we better stay in this room. Yes. Is it, is it free next room? Yes, I'm not. I'm not quite sure. I'll have a look. Yes. Is it empty next door? There's nobody in.